this entitled parent orders drinks for her kids at a bar and then thinks she can get away without having to pay for them. But little does she know that the person taking her order is more than just the waitress. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. Some backstory. I live at home with my family, and while I'd be happy to stay inside during quarantine, they insist I have to go outside for an hour a day while maintaining social distancing. I'm pretty lazy, so what I usually do is I walk to the nearby high school. It's absolutely huge. And I climb onto the roof and just sit there, listening to podcasts and playing mobile games. The part of the roof I usually sit on is a little ledge overlooking the parking lot and adjacent basketball court and it's only about a six foot drop onto some stairs. Not even proper roof. So today I was listening to Taz and playing Plague Inc. when I see a family ride in on their bikes in the parking lot. I figure they're just getting exercise in. Same as me. There's two kids, each young elementary school age, on little kids bikes and a mum, entitled mum, not on a bike, just watching them. Supervising I guess. So of course, since it's super intriguing when someone's on a roof, the little kids start pointing at me and waving and of course, I wave back and smile. Then I look back at my phone and get back into my game. About a minute later, I hear EM shouting. I only ever have one earbud in in case there's emergency. It's a habit. I figure she's shouting at her kids but then realize she's saying, Hey, you on your roof! I take out my remaining earbud and say, Yeah, what's up? She proceeds to tell me that I should come down this instant, that I'm distracting and influencing her children to do bad things, and that climbing the roof is against the rules. She was technically right about the against the rules thing, but the school's been closed for months, and I'm not endangering anybody, except myself kinda, but I know my way around the rooftop. So I politely explain that I'm completely capable and safe and that her children are free to ask me any questions. She repeats her previous points, only now adding that I'm a stupid teenager and that I'm just doing this for attention. I say that the effect I may have passively affecting her young children's curiosity is not really my problem and that she should just explain why they're too young to climb the roof instead of yelling at me about it. At this point, EM is just red in the face. Her kids aren't even paying attention anymore, riding in circles on their bikes again. She continues yelling at me and I try not to engage. She says I'm harassing and assaulting them by refusing to listen to her and refusing to get down. EM has gone full Karen at this point, just screaming about how I'm ruining their time out of the house and that I'm a B and I should be more considerate of people who have it worse than I do. The section of roof I'm on has a staircase that leads up to it and then a six foot block that I hoisted myself up onto and was sitting on. EM walks up the stairs and starts trying to hoist herself up the six foot block. She doesn't use the railing I use to help myself up, probably because it overlooks a 30 foot drop. The stairs bring you to the roof ledge on one side, but on the other side, there's quite a long drop to the pavement, which she seems to be avoiding at all costs. She continually does a running jump at the edge of the ledge and every single time can't pull up her body weight. She continues this for about two minutes while saying things like, I try to create a safe and secure environment for my children and you are threatening us by being up there. You need to get down right now. I, of course, am still saying nothing. Kind of just watching amused at this point. Cause like, what's she gonna do? Throw me off the side? After a while, she gives up and angrily goes back to her kids who are still riding in circles on their bikes. She turns, says she's reporting me to the police and takes her two kids and leaves the parking lot. I followed them with my eyes and she never once put the phone up to her ear. She might have called later, but there's been nothing about it. If she did call, they probably told her that she was overreacting. I hope so, or at least my little rooftop social distancing sanctuary will be more ruined than it is already. The pandemic has seemed to bring out all the busybody Karens. Anytime somebody does the tiniest thing that they don't like, they threaten to call the police on them. The Backstory 1 Shortly explained, my mother had a very happy life with my father until she was killed in an accident which left her with two kids, me and my brother. After a long time trying to get her life back together and struggling financially until getting her widow's pension, she was extremely lucky to meet my stepfather through a friend. 
Both of them fell for each other instantly, and only a few weeks later, they were dating. Backstory 2. My Stepfather's Backstory So my stepfather, who is the most kind, loving, and caring person in the world, was married to this Karen in his early life and had a daughter with her. But as Karens are, she wasn't satisfied with only my stepfather and had an affair with another guy she felt had a bigger career ahead. And after it came out, my stepfather of course divorced her. She moved with her affair across the country. I want to say at this point that her affair later left her for a younger woman, so karma for that. But as they had a daughter together, she was of age at the time of the divorce. My father kept a friendly relationship with that Karen, only for his daughter. So now that the scene is set, let's get into all the things that have happened ever since my mother and stepfather have started dating. From what I've been told, Karen was actually pretty nice at the beginning. But everything changed when my mother got pregnant with my youngest brother, and both my mother and stepfather were overcome with joy. One big change that came from this was that we moved about an hour away at that point because our then apartment was too small for three little children, and my stepfather had to drive about an hour to and from work every day. Then my brother was born, and everything seemed to be fine as can be. We moved, and it seemed that nothing could stop our luck, but that Christmas had a surprise for our family waiting in the form of a 12-page handwritten letter from Karen, accusing my mother, stuff like not using protection, conceiving my youngest brother only to have financial support for me and my brother. My father made good insurances that my mother was cared for and me and my brother get financial support till we either start working or reach the age of 27 and was bullying my mother for not getting an abortion. No need to say that my mother was shocked about all of that. She and my father sat together and started to write a letter back telling her to leave us alone and to never contact us again. We thought that was it, but as Karens are, they don't stop until they've spoken to the manager. Well, Karen's approach was to get her daughter, no blame goes towards her, involved and get her to spread her hate towards my mother. And as manipulative as Karen can be, it worked. It created a lot of friction between my mother and stepfather, as my stepsister didn't say anything bad in front of my stepfather. From what we all learned later, my stepsister got pregnant during a semester abroad, about the time my youngest brother was born, and had gotten an abortion, pressured into by Karen, and all without telling my stepfather a single thing. And my stepsister was in shock about everything once she met my youngest brother. And that piece of human waste Karen used her guilt and her feelings for her own campaign, telling her that my mother wanted to bind my stepfather to her by getting pregnant with his child, and that she was standing in the way of Karen and my stepfather getting back together. After years of trouble, when my stepsister was around for a visit, me and my brothers were often at friends' houses when this happened. After years of Karen sending hate letters to my mother, even though we told the Post not to deliver letters from her, Karen's web of lies and hate broke when she contradicted herself and the entire story was exposed. This led to a long talk between my mother, stepfather, and stepsister, which cleared up a lot of things and got them back to talking ground. We banished Karen's lies out of our lives, and while my stepsister still has contact, I don't know to which degree, we were finally Karen free. You would think the story would end here, but it doesn't. Karen's campaign, while blocked from us directly, was now being conducted through my stepfather's siblings. As my stepfather's family has regular gatherings, my step-aunts and step-uncles maintained a kind of good relationship with Karen, hearing nothing of her craziness, as it is none of my relatives' problems. So, Karen starts feeding them some of the lies she told previously, and some new ones to my relatives. And some of them leak through towards my mother and all those feelings from years of harassment come back up, leading to old arguments and to my mother stating that she won't come to family gatherings anymore, while such blatant lies were spread about her. So my father starts clearing up the lies that Karen has spread and everything seems fine. Until about three years ago at the birthday party of one of my step aunts. At most of the birthday parties, it's a big family gathering. And lo and behold, guess who got invited? Because my stepsister became a mother just weeks earlier, you guessed it, it was Karen. And guess what that freaking bee says as a greeting to my youngest brother? 
while he was standing next to me, my other brother, my mother, and my stepfather. She freaking greets him in her Karen tone of wanting to speak to the manager. Look how tall you've grown. At that point, we were all just standing there in shock, trying to grasp what that bee just said. After all the crap she wrote, trying to bully my mother into an abortion, she had the audacity to look my brother in the eyes and say that line as if she was a nice relative. Looking back, I was so utterly shocked that someone would actually say something like that, that I was just standing there dumbfounded, unable to do anything, until a few of my cousins, they don't know the whole story, got me away from there. We stayed there for dinner, but left quite soon after, because that waste of space was not only insulting my brother, bullying my mother, but openly started hitting on my stepfather, who was disgusted that she was invited to a family gathering, while she was neither friend nor family. After an enraged ride home, he gave his siblings an ultimatum, either invite Karen to a party to never see him again, or expel Karen from all family related activities because he doesn't want her or her negativity anywhere close to his family. I would love to say that this story has a happy ending as in getting her arrested or a restraining order on her, but at least she's out of our lives. Best thing to come, after graduation from uni, ending my half orphan's pension, my stepfather will legally adopt me. And Karen, if you by any chance read this, screw you. What's so crazy is that this Karen basically did this to herself. She was the one who cheated in the first place. And then when, well that doesn't work out for her, she comes back to try and ruin everyone else's lives that are trying to make some happiness for themselves. So for about three years, I was between 12 and 15 years old. My dad owned a pub. I'm from the UK, and until my health got bad, I used to chip in the majority of the time cleaning, washing up, serving, waitressing, etc. So this story takes place when I was 14 on one of the busiest nights, Halloween. For those of you who don't know, Halloween is chaotic for pubs because loads of adults dressed up in costumes and constantly come in to get hammered. Normally, I would have stayed upstairs. My dad lives above the pub, just minding my own business, sitting up at my dad's desk sometimes answering calls for him, since he was downstairs helping the staff cope. However, on this day, one of our servers had called up saying they weren't going to be able to do their shift, since their kid had fallen ill. That was understandable, these things happen. The shift they had is normally called the graveyard shift, midnight until we're closed. Anyways, so there wouldn't be many customers, right? So I could cover it. Wrong. Oh, I was so wrong. When I got downstairs to cover the shift, there were still loads of people, and this is where it began. I was taking the drink order of someone when EM, entitled mother, walks in with B1, Brat1, and B2. It was midnight, mind you. B1 was four-year-old girl and B2 was seven-year-old boy. I saw them, made the mistake of making eye contact, and then went back to taking the customer's drink order. NC is nice customer. Me to NC. So your table wants two list drinks, correct? Yes, thank you. All right, I'll add it to your bill. Already had four drinks between him and his buddy. Thanks. EM screamed from the other side of the room. Excuse me, me and my babies are thirsty. Yes, she actually said that. Um, one moment and I'll take your order. I go back to the bar and give the bartender NC's order. As his order is being prepared, I went over to EM and her brats. Hello, how may I? B1 cut me off. Give me a cola. Me, a little annoyed. One cola, got it. Anything else? I need lemonade. Now. Me looking at the EM. And what would you like, ma'am? EM, who was looking at her phone whilst her babies ordered. Ugh, get me in. Orders the most expensive beer we have. Something like Stella, I can't remember too well. Okay, so you want, and I list the order. Would you like to pay now or open a tab? EM looking at her phone. I don't care, tab. Okay, I'll go get your drinks. I went up, gave the bartender her order, and took NC's order to him. After about three minutes, her order of drinks were done, and I brought them to her. Not moments after I set the pop on the table, she screamed. What's this? That's your children's drinks, ma'am. Excuse me, I didn't order those for my babies. Yes, but your children ordered them, and when I read the order back, you didn't say anything. So I assumed you were okay with it. I wasn't listening. 
They're children. Can't you see they're too young for pop? But mom, I want that drink. You said I could have anything I wanted. I know, baby, but pop isn't good enough for you. If you want something sweet, have your packet of wine gums. For those of you who don't know, wine gums have one of the highest sugar contents of all sweets in the UK and are really bad to give kids. Then EM turns her attention to me. Honestly, I was expecting her to give me trouble and ask me to swap the drinks out. Entitled customers have asked this before and I guess it's what she meant, but EM turning her attention to me. Take the pop, I want two fruit shoots. Okay ma'am, I'll grab them now. With that, I took the pop to the bar, took the fruit shoots to her and asked, Would you like your bill? EM still looking at her phone whilst B1 and 2 are eating a huge bag of wine gums. Yes, yes. Cash or card? Cash. She then hands me a £10 note before I can even tell her that her tab is £11.60. She looks at me when I don't leave and snaps. Why are you still here? Go get my change. Sorry ma'am, but you still owe $1.60. What do you mean I still owe money? I paid for my drinks and my baby's fruit shoots. But you still owe money for the pops your kids ordered. Now, normally I would take the pop off the bill or let her only pay for one if she was a regular or if she had said something when they first ordered the drinks so we didn't make them. But she was so rude and her brats had made a mess of the table, leaving me with more cleaning up than I already had before. My babies didn't even drink the pop, so I don't have to pay for it. I just looked at her, then spoke. Ma'am, in a firm tone, you owe £1.60. Pay up or I'm getting the owner. I was so done with her bullcrap and wanted to cry out my frustrations, but I just gritted my teeth instead. Plus, my dad would be able to handle her much better than me. Good, then he'll explain while a child thinks she knows better than an adult. That was it. I had already dealt with one Karen that week, which meant I was on a short fuse. So when she said that, I was done with dealing with her. I grabbed my radio from my apron pocket, everyone on duty had one, and spoke. Me into the radio. Dad, can you come to X section? We have a problem customer who won't pay all of her bill. Her face turned white when she realized she was in fact speaking to the owner's daughter. Before he could even come, she opened the purse producing the money she owed, threw it on the table, it fell on the floor, picked up B1, and stormed out with her brats. Barely touched her beer, but B2 put the fruit shoots in their Halloween sweet bag. My dad came and asked where she was and I explained. He let me and the bartender have the untouched pop and poured the beer away. He was proud of me for how I handled this one without him and how I didn't cry. The last Karen I dealt with brought me to tears and my dad had to intervene. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.